Hi everyone, Nick here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at two portfolio strategies that could be all-in-one investments. These are balanced funds and target date retirement funds. The main difference between these funds is their risk exposure over time. Even if you don't invest in either of these funds, there is something to learn from these strategies. We'll start with an overview of these two strategies, get into more details about their risk exposures, and then we'll see what we can learn from these strategies when designing our own portfolios. Let's get to it. We'll start with the balance fund strategy. It's a very simple strategy. Balance funds have a fixed allocation to stocks and bonds. They perform a periodic rebalancing to keep that allocation. If you see a fund with balanced in the fund name, like the Vanguard Balanced Index Fund, ticker VBIAX, these funds are typically 60% US stocks and 40% US bonds. However, there are balance funds that use other strategies. For instance, Vanguard has a series of funds called Life Strategy Funds. These are all balance funds that maintain fixed allocations, but they are more diversified with international exposure. In my opinion, these are the best types of balance funds. They range in risk profile from someone who wants current income with limited risk to someone who's focused mainly on growth. The stock bond allocations change from 20% intervals with 20% stocks, 40% stocks, 60% stocks, and 80% stocks, and the remainder in bonds. These funds have pretty low fees at 0.14%. Sure, it's a little higher than the fees for the three fund portfolio, but it's a great investment option for someone who wants a completely hands-off approach. Next, let's look at the target date retirement funds. These are very popular and are often the default investment option in people's retirement plans. Unlike balanced funds, these funds do not maintain a fixed allocation over time. Here is how Vanguard describes their target date funds. Our target date funds powerfully blend investment and behavioral research to help give all investors the best chance of generating lasting retirement income. They use a strategy called a glide path. Each company does this a little differently, but here is the glide path from Vanguard. They start you out with a 90% allocation to stocks and 10% to bonds. Then at age 40, they start transitioning some stocks to bonds every year. By age 72, they reach 30% stocks. These funds also start adding some short-term tips, treasury inflation-protected securities, for some inflation protection as you approach retirement. If you want to learn more about tips, watch my video, which I'll link up here and below. Now the transition from age 40 to 72 from stocks to bonds is not linear. It accelerates as you approach and then enter retirement. As Vanguard mentioned, this strategy is based on behavioral research. When you're young, you can afford and are more likely to stomach a big drop in your portfolio. Then as you approach retirement and the stakes get much higher, they start reducing your risk. This is so the risk of a stock market crash is less significant to your portfolio in retirement. Now that we've reviewed how balanced and target date funds work, which one is better? Whenever I'm faced with such a difficult question, there is one thing I do first. Before I even get started, I smash the like button to support free financial education. The goal of my channel is to help people achieve financial independence. I'm providing high value content for no cost. Each one of my videos takes over 10 hours of my time to produce, some more than 20. All I ask for in return is that you smash the like button. I would also appreciate your support by subscribing to help me reach 1,000 subscribers. Now back to which is better. It really depends on your risk tolerance and investment goals. 
Let's take a look at a hypothetical example of an investor. At age 30, they have a portfolio of $50,000. And after 35 years of saving and investing, they accumulate $2 million by retirement. Once in retirement, they start taking distributions and drawing down the portfolio. After age 60, I broke it down by five years since that's when the target date fund allocation start to change more rapidly. Now let's compare the target date fund versus a balanced portfolio with 60% stocks and 40% bonds. We'll look at the exposure to stocks at each point. Now this isn't perfect because portfolio growth for each of these portfolios would be different at different points in time. But for the sake of simplicity, this will illustrate the point. We can see that early in investing, the target date fund has a much higher exposure to stocks. This is great if you wanna take advantage of decades of compounding in the market, assuming you can stomach the risk. However, shortly after age 60, the target date fund has less exposure to stocks than the balanced portfolio and that difference grows to quite a large amount by age 70. Stocks have a much higher risk and have often dropped by 50% in the course of months. Adding this to the table shows the amount of that 50% drop in the stock portion of the portfolio. Imagine at each point how you would feel. If you're 15 years into your career and investing at age 40, how would you feel if you saw a $100,000 drop in the value of your stock portfolio? You could ask similar questions at age 50 and 60, and the stakes get higher as your portfolio grows. Your ability to recover also decreases as you get older. There are many personal circumstances that go into determining your asset allocation and how to change it as you approach retirement. I think it's good to break this down into two phases, accumulation and drawdown. During accumulation, having too low of an exposure to stocks could risk not having enough to retire. The balanced portfolio is very unlikely to have the same growth in compounding between ages 30 to 65 as the target date portfolio. One dollar could grow to more than $40 over this time in the stock market. If there is a crash, you have time to recover, and you'll be investing even more over time. However, if your temperament for risk doesn't match the 90% stock allocation, that doesn't really matter. Many people sold their stocks in 2008 or 2009 because they had more risk than they could handle. This destroyed their portfolio returns. As a reminder, the average investor only earned a 2.6% return from 1998 to 2017, while a simple buy and hold strategy with basically every asset class outperformed. You don't want to overestimate your ability to take risk and panic in a crash. Now let's look at retirement. The goal in retirement is usually to match your liabilities. This is what's called a liability matching portfolio. A lot of people like to talk trash about bonds, but they are really good tools to lower the risk in matching future liabilities. The stakes of a 50% drop in stocks during retirement is significantly higher. Let's say you just retired at age 65. How would you feel if your portfolio dropped by $500,000 over the course of a few months. You need money to fund your lifestyle, take vacations you always wanted to, and so on. The news is full of gloom, doom, and uncertainty. Experts are saying the latest crisis is like no other crisis before it. And $500,000 represents years of your retirement expenses and it took you years of hard work to earn it. Even if you have an iron stomach, a protracted downturn could mean you run out of money before you die. The balanced portfolio will likely give higher returns in retirement, but do you really need those higher returns? You've won the game. You do not need to keep playing. 
On the other hand, if you are a retiree with 70% in bonds, your risk due to inflation is also much higher. And this is partly why Vanguard uses up to 15% in short-term tips in their target retirement income fund. You could also add these to a balanced portfolio to minimize this risk. Now, these aren't the only strategies. You could get pretty creative and come up with your own strategy that blends these strategies or does something entirely different. For some people, they hold a balanced portfolio with 80 to 100% in stocks until they reach their retirement goal. Then they convert it to a lower risk portfolio that they expect to match their liabilities. Some go as far as to create a treasury inflation protected securities ladder that covers five to 10 years of future expenses. While this is likely suboptimal from a total performance perspective, a tips ladder will make sure that you have inflation adjusted cash to pay your bills. Some people will use a bond tent where they gradually accumulate bonds as they approach retirement, then reduce it after retirement. This is to limit the risk of a market crash right around retirement. My wife and I are pursuing financial independence. We may retire early, and even though we're only a few years away, we're nearly 100% in stocks. This is because we have a solid emergency fund and a temperament to see the opportunity of a crash and not panic. We also accept the risk of having to work a few extra years if needed. As we get closer, we will likely shift closer to a 70 to 80% stock allocation. We'll likely have a couple years of expenses and cash equivalents. Our financial independence number assumes a two to two and a half percent withdrawal rate, which is extremely conservative. If things go well, our portfolio will continue to compound and we can even increase our expenses during retirement. If we need to weather a downturn, we can cut back a little. That combined with a couple years of cash reserves and a really low withdrawal rate will give us more flexibility. Our situation is unique. If a crash happens when we're about to retire at age 40, we can just keep working. Our withdrawal rate is really conservative, which will also protect us with a higher stock allocation in retirement. Most people are not in our situation and will need a different strategy for their retirement plan. There's no one size fits all answer, but I think you should carefully consider your goals and your temperament need for risk. You can create your own table like we looked at with your own projections and consider different strategies and risk exposures. Leave a comment below and share your strategy with us. I think both the target retirement date strategy and balance fund strategy like the life strategy funds are excellent if they match your goals and risk profile. They are autopilot investments that are extremely well diversified with pretty low costs. If you're like me and like to optimize your portfolio with lower costs or tax exposure, I think the three fund portfolio is the best portfolio for most investors. A three fund portfolio can be constructed to match your unique risk profile and it is extremely efficient. I made a video detailing this portfolio, which I'll link up here and below. If you got value from this video and wanna support free financial education, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching everyone. Later.